Hi, I'm Kelly. And I'm VJ. And we're here to talk to you today about the Sea of Cortez diving and why you should totally travel there, other than the fact that it's awesome. Before we get started, let's just do a quick review or a little overview of why you're watching this video, who we are, etc. Uh, we're Blue Water Travel. Blue Water Travel is your full service dive travel agency. They handle everything from your individual bookings to full group trips to our photo workshops, all sorts of good stuff. Totally great people. You should definitely work with them. Uh, we've got other webinars. This might be your first one. You might be here as a constant viewer, but uh, check back later. We'll be doing one on the Socorros, Galapagos. We've also got all of our past webinars up on the website. If you uh, want to see a webinar on a place you want to travel, let us know. Maybe we'll do one soon. And Blue Water Travel is part of the larger Blue Water family, who includes um, the Underwater Photography Guide, which is a great resource online for all things underwater photography and video, camera reviews, housing reviews, articles, tutorials, settings articles, pretty much anything you want to learn about how to shoot underwater, they've got it covered. Lots of free stuff. There's also some extra videos and things if you sign up. Uh, it doesn't cost anything, but it does just allow you to see our newsletter. Blue Water Photo is also part of this family, and that is the go-to place to get all of your underwater photography gear. So if you get really psyched after reading the guide, come to us at Blue Water Photo, and we'll get you hooked up with the perfect camera rig. We've got basically all the housing, lights, strobes, anything you could want, and we'll get you taken care of. And then, of course, last but not least is Blue Water Travel. And once you've got all your awesome photo gear, They'll help you go out and explore the world. So with uh, the whole family, you can learn, shoot, and explore. Take it all in and go diving. Awesome. So yeah, anyway, we're here at Sea Cortez. I'll let DJ take you through what we're going to talk about. So yeah, so today we want to talk about a couple things uh, regarding the Sea of Cortez, why we want to visit the Sea of Cortez, when's the best time to go, and what there is to see there. Um, we're going to do an overview about the Rocio del Mar, which is an amazing liveaboard, uh, one of the premier liveaboards in the Sea of Cortez, and also uh, talk about our Sea of Cortez photo workshops. So, why visit the Sea of Cortez? In my opinion, I was there just a few months ago and really loved it. It's a very cool place because it offers kind of a unique situation. You get really neat desert ecosystem, especially all the islands and the topside topography is really cool. Um, there are a ton of great animals. I found that it's really a mix of tropical and temperate climates. So you see fish that you might see in Hawaii or the Philippines, but then you also see some fish and critters you might see here in California where the water's colder, which is kind of cool to see them all together. Um, there are sea lion colonies with very friendly sea lions. There are whale sharks. You can get lucky and see big bait balls and schools of fish, schools of barracuda. If you're really lucky, sometimes you can see and get in the water with sperm whales, dolphins. There are mobula rays. There's just all sorts of really cool stuff out there. Um, there's also great macro opportunities, so don't leave your macro lens at home. Pike blennies and nudibranchs and all sorts of things are out there. Um, Really fun to watch. It's great to watch some of the behavior of these little fish because they sit in their little holes and they'll pop out, show a little mating display, or or catch fish, things like that. So it's really neat macro too. Uh, those are the the main reasons to visit. We do have some photo workshops. The dates are on the little slideshow there for next year. We'll talk about those a little bit more too down the line. One of the things really um, nice about the Sea of Cortez, you have really warm water temperatures um, in season that we usually like to go. Uh, the dive seasons, um, you can pretty much dive Sea of Cortez year round. However, the best season is generally in the summer and the fall. Uh, that's the time when the water is the warmest. Uh, visibility is usually the best, and the seas are the calmest as well. Uh, and there's some really good time there um, for um, um, good animal interaction during that time. Um, visibility is generally about 100 feet at most sites. Um, it can go down to about 15 feet. Um, when we're snorkeling with the whale sharks, generally the visibility can sometimes drop down uh, lower because of the plankton in the water, but that's what brings the whale sharks in to feed. Um, but you know, visibility can, can be variable, but generally it's, it's, it's very good. Um, water temps, you can expect water temps to be around 80 to 84. 
Sometimes it can dip down a little bit colder in certain areas. We recommend using a three millimeter wetsuit. Um, you can bring a, um, a vest or hooded vest or hood. That's helpful too as well when you hit some of the areas that are a little bit uh, cooler. But um, yeah, that's one of the nice things. You have the warm water and you have the opportunity to um, to shoot uh, both wide angle and macro. As Ellie mentioned, there's a lot of really great wide angle and macro opportunities. There. So it's very um, not like some of the locations where you have specifically macro. This is a very kind of varied uh, area that you have a lot of both. Yeah, you can usually find both on every dive. You're not usually like the only wide angle, only max. If you want to try and shoot both if you have a compact camera, you can totally do that. Or if you want to take your macro lens, but you're worried about missing some great wide angle opportunity, odds are you'll have that same opportunity. Where is the Sea of Cortez? If you're looking on this map, it is the Gulf of California. I don't know how to show that webinar here, but I'm circling the islands, which are two islands that are kind of a third of the way down from the northern end of the Gulf. That's where most of the diving for the Gulf, uh, for the Sea of Cortez. Islands are great. They're out in the middle of nowhere. You kind of end up not seeing anybody during the trip, which is really fun. There's not a ton of boat traffic. Yeah, you might see a few fishing boats, but very yeah. rarely. If, if <laughs> Other you feel than that, isolated, it's, it is really Yeah, cool. uh, a lot of uninhabited islands, so it's really nice because you really do feel like you're out, out in the remote areas that uh, nobody's really living out there. Um, very easy to get to. That's one of the really great things about the Sea of Cortez trips. Uh, logistically, uh, very easy. Uh, people in the United States basically take a flight into uh, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. Um, and then the shuttle picks us up directly there at the airport. Um, it's about a four hour shuttle down to Rocky mm -hmm. Point. Um, and it's all coordinated um, with uh, two shuttle drivers and uh, you know, they carry all the gear and all uh, the guests down to the, to the boat. And just at that point you load onto the liveaboard and you're on your way. Um, and fly into Rocky Point if you want to. Uh, it tends to be a little bit more expensive with a smaller airport. It's easier to fly into Phoenix, especially if you're in the United States, because it's a small flight. You're not going to have to worry about any carry-on restrictions. Um, and this is this is specifically for the Rocio del Mar, but they are pretty much the only liveaboard right now in the area. It's definitely the way to go if you're going to be diving as a as a liveaboard trip. Um, for example, flight from LA where we're based is only about an hour and a half. Super easy. Fly Southwest. No baggage fees. Dive travel experience at Israel, trying to hit all those tiny travel restrictions with the very on baggage. Um, so it's easy. The shuttles are comfortable. You can buy a beer at the gas station and take it on the shuttle. They don't travel in. Um, here's just yeah. a couple images. Yeah, just down. some really nice topography as you drive down to uh, Rocky Point. Yeah. Um, a lot of cactus and uh, desert climate as you go through the Sonoran Desert. Yep. Back of the shuttle. The roads, you know, they put all of your dive gear in the, the big trailer so you're not crammed in with your gear. You're comfortable. It's a nice passenger van. Air conditioning works well. Um, um, yeah, so the Rocio del Mar, it's uh, one of the main liveaboards there in the Sea of Cortez. Um, as we discussed, it's uh, uh, logistics are really easy as far as getting there, uh, flying into Phoenix. Uh, the boat is a really nice boat. The thing I think that really makes the boat is the crew. They have a really amazing crew on board. So amazing. Um, yeah, that, I think really, I mean, it should really be emphasized. The crew really yeah. makes a lot of I, I haven't been on a ton of liveaboards, so I just assume that crews were great. But the people that were on the trip with me who have been on 20 liveaboards, 30 liveaboards, all hands down to the best crew they've ever had on a liveaboard. Yeah, very attentive. Very attentive, very friendly. Yeah. They make conversation with you. They know the dive sites. The dive masters know the sites well. They know where to find things. They're all very good, friendly people, and they want you to have a really good Yeah, and basically, a boat has 10 staterooms. It accommodates a maximum of 20 guests. Um, and it's actually quite a large boat, so even with 20 guests, it really never felt crowded. Mm -hmm. uh, even at dinner, time. everybody in the galley yeah. is comfortable. You, you're not doing anything like it. Here's a few photos so you can kind of see. We've got just the one of the staterooms with the double beds, one of the staterooms kind of the standard setup with a single sort of bunk bed style. It's nice, they're not true bunk beds, so you're not directly over somebody. Um, and then a picture of the galley, you can see the spacious eating area. That one's comfortable. 
very well air conditioned down in the galley. I actually wore a sweater to most of the meals. <laughs> um, yeah, just, pictures. yeah, another picture of a stateroom. <laughs> Large windows, picture windows. That you can see, yeah, you know, have that's nice one views. thing that is nice. I know yeah. some boats you don't get that, but Lots every every room yeah. has a full sized window, which is kind of cool because when you get the natural light, you don't feel like you're cramped in on the boat. Nice shot of the boat, <laughs> some beauty shots. But you can see too, just the cool mountains. That's all over. All the, the photography of the topside mountains and islands is just neat. You want to go hiking too, but you don't because you're diving. More pretty shots. The sea here with night, all lit up. It was, uh, he wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't on my chart. Yeah. Okay, I'm <laughs> blanking on his name, and I feel bad. This is our chef, and he, Joshua. It was Joshua, and he was awesome. He was very nice. The food was excellent. I sure. Yeah, great food. food. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, they have different chefs, but the food is great. Yeah. And they give you a ton. It's twice during the, the during the trip, they have um, a barbecue top yeah. side, so on the on the upper deck. So that was from that's to, what this yeah. photo was from. They were doing carne asada tacos, and they had a whole spread that you kind of went through the line and built your own tacos. Yeah. Great. Beer so, and wine is included throughout the trip. They've got Tecate and they had some decent red wines that I tried. So that's kind of nice because you can just enjoy a, a beer every night when you're done diving. Um, here's a little panorama view. Um, you can see the two rubber dinghies. Uh, that's what they use to go out. So you, you get on those get on the edge and they zip you over to the dive site. I think the longest dive travel we had on those little pongas was 10, 10 minutes. minutes. Yeah, maybe. Minutes, yeah. Maybe if the wind was up and they couldn't yeah. find a good spot to yeah. drop us. But yeah, in short, easy trips. So, you know, while they're not the most comfortable to sit on for a long period of time, you're not on them on for the, a long, long period of time. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Um, and they're easy to get on and off the boat. There's no real issues. Whether it's windy, they've got to set up with a head on, or if it's nice and long, you can get on from the side. That would be well. It's a gorgeous sunset. You'll get plenty of those on yeah, your trip. Yeah, lots of sunsets. <laughs> Another set of morning shot. That was actually in the evening. That was another yeah. another great yeah, another sunset. sunset. Yeah, yeah, look at how calm that water is. Yeah, <laughs> extremely calm. It's just a class. <laughs> Love it. And then, of course, at the end of the trip, there's the whale shark snorkel, which is great fun, especially if you've never been with whale sharks. It's a good way to get introduced to whale sharks. Um, I think this is one of the areas they kind of hang out at more when they're younger. A lot of the whale sharks were medium sized, not the huge ones that I know you can get in other places. The larger ones were about probably 25 to 30 feet. Yeah, yeah. so I'd say we had sharks anywhere from 15 feet to 30 feet. Um, visibility can be very variable. It's usually a little better in the morning as there's more stuff going on. It might drop down in the afternoon, but it also just depends on what section of the bay the sharks end up being in. And the bay is huge. You zip all over the bay uh, looking for the sharks. As soon as they find them, you kind of hop in the water and cruise with them for as long as you can keep up and snap your photos and go. And they do go out in small groups. They try and limit because there's only allowed like, four divers at four the divers time. Four divers at the time, sure. So. And the sharks generally congregate in this bay sometime between like May and November. Yeah. Um, during the summer months, it's a very high guarantee that you're going to see whale sharks there. There's just yeah. the number of whale sharks there. I mean, we saw probably 10, 15 whale sharks during yeah. the afternoon, uh, during the day. So. Um, very high chance of seeing whale sharks. It would be kind of unlikely if you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Here's some more fun whale shark photos. And they're cool because they're just so big and they're so graceful. Come up and they feed. That's the best time to find them is when they're up and feeding because they kind of just hang in the water column, suck in all the plankton, and you can kind of get your shot and get it. If not, it's just a swim as fast as you can to keep up with them. They don't look like it, but they are moving quickly. More beautiful images that you might be able to capture down there, sea lions. Yeah, a lot of really, really great sea lion interaction. Um, generally spent a couple of days around the sea lion rookeries. And so you can do, um, most of the time in the mornings are the best time when they're more active. Uh, you can have some really, really great interactions and opportunities to take great photos with the sea lions. Yeah. And then this time of year, the summer months, which is when most of the trips go out, you usually have some of the ones that were you know, new pups in the spring, They've grown up a little bit, they're adolescents, and they're very curious. Those they're are the curious. best ones that will come out and play with you. <laughs> and you sometimes see sea turtles. There's there's so much stuff out there. That's some, cool. Yeah, you get some really interesting behavior too. And and again, you know, Sea of Cortez is really a lot of times known for the big animals, uh, mm -hmm. the whale sharks, the 
uh, sometimes hammerheads and sea lions and occasionally, as we were mentioning, it with a squirrel. But again, there's just phenomenal macro oh, photography yes. there too as well, and you get some really great behavior shots out of this uh, electric torpedo ray. Mm -hmm. Great eel. There's definitely a lot of eels out there. You do two night dives with the Roskia del Mar, um, and you have a couple couple of your dives on the non-night dive days will be towards dusk twilight, dives. duskish, yeah, dusk and dives. that's when like these guys you might even see on free swimming, which is kind of cool. A variety nice. of hard corals, um, corals, soft yeah. corals. There's a lot of different stuff out there. Yellow coral, or black coral, I should say, as it actually <laughs> is called, but it is yellow. That's all over the place, which is neat. It's very, very pretty to look at. There's just big fields of it. A lot of destinations, you find a lot of the black coral in the deeper water, but yep. uh, here it was found in the shallows too as well. There's a lot of really dense uh, black coral gardens in the shallows as well. Ranks, like we were talking about, really cool colors, different than what you might see in other places of the world. They're big too, so it's not like Anna Lau where the nude ranks the size of a grain of rice. I'm going to get it in focus with your camera. This guy was probably two or three inches, so it was easy to set up a nice macro shot and get it. Um, a lot of yeah. different jawfish, so a blue spotted and the giant jawfish, sometimes with eggs, like in that photo. Fun. You sit and watch them, and they'll start out of their hole and they'll go back in. Horses, more jawfish, lots of cool macro. There's the pike blenny, orange throated pike blenny, that you know, is well known in this area. And they put their head in the hole, wait and watch, and all of a sudden they'll just kind of pop out and go, oof, 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 and then they'll go right back in. Capture them right when they come out, they put that dorsal fin up, which is great. So, if we've enticed you, Oh, on the Sea of Cortez trips, if you uh, were watching this video or the webinar and just really, really want to dive, here's when you can join us. We'll be going next year, July 30th through August 6th, or August 6th through the 13th. It's 2400 bucks, which is a great price for a liveaboard. All your, you know, twin share accommodation, you get three meals a day, beer and wine included. That includes the whale shark snorkeling, uh, diving with sea lions, and uh, these are our photo workshops. So there'll be one of us from the shop, a photo pro, and uh, go over daily image reviews. They usually do photo talks each day on different subjects. And of course, we're here to answer any questions that you have with your photo gear or with photo in general. So uh, we're free to pretty good. Fun, fun trips. And uh, I can't recommend it more. I had a blast on my trip last night. You too. <laughs> so I want to go back. Yeah, join us. If not, there's another cool workshop we've got going. It's the same area, but it's not the Sea of Cortez specific midriff island trip that we've just been talking about a lot. Uh, Explore Baja actually goes the entire coast. So it starts up in Rocky Point and goes all the way down the coast. And the second trip will start down at the bottom of Cabo and then go all the way north. And so you see kind of the whole gamut of what the Sea of Cortez has to offer. Uh, I believe a 10 day trip. It's actually a 13-day oh, wow. trip. It's a longer yeah. trip. So we're longer trip, but totally worth it if you've got the time. Uh, still a great price, too. And I regret either of these Excellent. Mm -hmm. So here's some information. If you um, would like to email us, you can email at info at bluewaterdivetravel.com or call us at 310-915-6677 for more information, or check out our website at www.bluewaterdivetravel.com. Yep, we've got all the information on the Sea of Cortez, as well as just about every other dive destination in the world, so you can look at anywhere you want to go and find information on when to go, what to bring, travel tips, things like that. And then, of course, all the pros at um, uh, Blue Water Dive Travel will we be able to help you out. Happy to answer questions and get you booked on your next great adventure, which hopefully will be to the Sea of Cortez. Hope to see you out there. Great. Thanks so much for watching. Right.